Today it's time for arrangement theory. First, we will take a look at the structure types in arrangement, and then we will explain macro and micro arrangement. And of course, finally, we will take a look at the examples from the real life so we can understand a bit more the theory together with the application. So, okay. So I will use quite a bit of classical music theory terms, but I will also take my initiative and modernize them according to the electronic dance music that we have today. But to understand the arrangement, we have to understand first different structure types that is used in an arrangement. First and the most important structural part in an arrangement is probably the chorus. The chorus contains the hook of the track and it is accepted as the richest part by having different type of elements and having really high energy levels. Many tracks actually repeat the chorus more than once, so you, you will probably hear the chorus at the first half of the track and then you will probably have a break and then you will hear the chorus one more time. Let's take a look at an example from Enrico Sanguiliano. In this track we have the first chorus here and then the break and the second chorus here. So we will start with the first chorus. We hear a of like an energy, a of like an upbeat tempo here. And then the track goes into break here and then we come back to the chorus again. And if we go back and you will see that actually this part repeats twice in this track. Let me show you how similar they are. Back. Forward. I will say maybe 30-40% of the techno tracks today uses this structure. Chorus, break, chorus. Let's take example from another genre. This time we have an example from Jeremy Olander. He's one of my favorite artists when it comes to progressive melodic house. And we are looking at the summer hit steps. Again, the, the structure is very similar. We have the first chorus here, second chorus here, and a break here. The first chorus. I'm not able to play all the track due to the copyright issues, but you understand the idea. Again, here. The main difference is that Jeremy's track steps has actually longer loop. So the, the track loops itself, I think, around the 16 bar. So it feels less repetitive because of that. Again, go back. Second chorus. So again, the same idea. Let's take another example. This time we will make it even more popish and we are going to the Daft Punk Classic one more time. This is a shorter version, so intros and outros a bit cut so that we have the faster development in track. Hence, the first chorus actually comes much earlier in the track, here. And then they go into the smooth part, the verses and the breaks. And then we get the same chorus one more time. This is kind of ironic, having one more time twice. And comes the second chorus. So the choruses are important. The alternative chorus is something getting more popular lately. It's not something that you will find in the literature, but alternative chorus basically means that a slightly different version of the main chorus so that we can avoid repeating the same chorus twice. So when you are looking for creating a track that takes your listeners to a journey means that your track keeps evolving and keeps the attention and curiosity of the listeners up all the time, this is the style maybe you should consider. For example, if you take a look at this track, we are taking a look at Return to Oz Art Bat Remix. So you will see that we have a final course at the end of the track. So we have this really rich synth sound on top of that very heavy, very aggressive lead sound, really important. Now. The alternative chorus here is actually very smartly done by Artbot. If we go back our first chorus area around 2 to 3 minutes, you will hear exactly the same sound but without the lead sound. Take a look. This is same almost like the chorus but the main difference is that this, there are some of percussions that is gone and we don't have that aggressive lead sound. Back again. So when you are creating your alternative course, it doesn't need to be super different from the original course. You just need to do this additional touch 
that makes it slightly different. But there are also, of course, more differentiating alternative courses as well. The bridge is the part where two contrasting structural elements are connected to each other. Definition changes depending on the genre that you are looking for, but in modern electronic dance music, I will say that bridges are often less than four bars, and if they get bigger than four bars, they often treat as the break. I will give the bridge example from my own track, The Untimed, because there's a really clean bridge in this track. And I want to, of course, connect this verse into a chorus. And here, right before the chorus, take a look what I do. creating this small type of break, basically the bridge, so that these two different parts of the track can connect to each other. Again, one more time. Break is a special version of the bridges where the length is longer than the four bars. And it's extremely important for electronic dance music because it is often used to create this emotional pause and relieving the tension in the track. And moreover, it is the most important contrasting element in your track. So if you are going for this dynamic feel in your track, this is the part you should be paying extra attention. And if we compare to the real break of the track, you can see the difference between the bridge and break much more clearly. Here the bridge was really smooth and not really emphasized too much, but if you go to the break, take a look how much the energy levels actually drop in the break. We went all the way down with the energy and of course and a whole track like 32 bars we are just trying to put up and up and up again until we reach the verse here. So this is kind of the main idea of a break, which also brings us a drop. Drop is actually a special double structure where the break and the chorus comes together, meaning that two most contrasting elements comes right after each other, creating this big energy difference in a short amount of time. Drops are mainly used to create euphoria in the dance floor or people at gym. If you enjoyed the video up to now, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. But let's go back now. The first oftentimes is the place where the track actually evolves. If you consider, for example, the chorus, the highest part of the track, it doesn't just come middle of nowhere. And if you are, for example, using the double choruses, the same chorus device, you have to have another part in the track that where you actually develop your ideas. And those parts are often regarded as the verse mean the where the ideas get developed. So when it comes to the verse, this is a bit confusing for the most people, but again, I will go from my track so that I can play longer without hitting the copyright issues. But here I have a break in the wheel. So first thing in the track is like smoothing out the things so that we can develop back again to the drop or the back again to the chorus. So we are developing that Arpeggio item behind the crown. We are trying to bring that arpeggios and the 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 chord sounds. And now we go to the main chorus. So that verse and the choruses, this transition could be very obvious or sometimes it could be like this track smoother it's like you're developing the idea and then finally you reach the chorus and then you even develop the chorus even further because during this track for example it even reaches the higher point i will say this brings us to the intro intros are mostly percussive and they they're often up to 32 bars at the beginning of the track it is mainly used to make it easy for the djs to mix the track because the percussive part doesn't have any tonal information, meaning that you don't really need to think about the key of the track while you are mixing in. And the outros are the, more or less the same, but you use them at the end of the track. Once you understand the structure, it comes to the point where you can actually arrange your track into those 
structural elements. There are two different actually approach for arranging the tracks. This term is something that I created myself, but I think it explains quite well. Uh, I call them micro and micro arrangement. Micro arrangement means that shuffling the track by using four to 16 bar loops and creating a concrete idea or a story for your track. In macro arrangement, transitions, automations, effects are really not important and you shouldn't spend any time on them until you are happy with the main idea and the story of your track. There are two different macro arrangement styles. The first one is called top-down approach and the second one is called bottom-up approach. Again, these two terms are something that I created, but I explain why I call them this way. And top-down arrangement, we can actually simplify it to the three steps. First, you create your chorus so that you have as much elements that you can have in a 16 or the 2, 32 bar loop. And step two is just copy pasting this loop all over the track. And step three will be just deleting the elements that you don't feel like belongs to the, those different structures. And hence, this approach is also called subtractive arrangement because you are subtracting and deleting stuff from the full track. Because we are used just a single loop, this is what I call single top down arrangement because we had a simple chorus and we arrange everything from there. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can find hundreds of thousands of different inspiring classes. For example, at the moment I am taking Premiere Pro classes and I am taking Photoshop classes in, and in the meantime I am taking a look at the cinematography and lighting and so on so that I can create a bit more entertaining and fun videos on YouTube and improve my YouTube game. Probably you have already noticed that. And if you wonder why Skillshare and not YouTube tutorial, first reason and the most important reason is that in Skillshare you will have the lessons structured and in the meantime you will also find all the related documentation together with the video as well. And the other reason of course to when you are focusing on learning you don't want to have the ads and in Skillshare you can have the ad free experience. And if you want to take a look and trade yourself, you will find a link below in the description and the first thousand people who clicks the link will get the three months free access to the Skillshare. So it's a perfect opportunity to, to try it yourself and see how it works. But now let's go back to our tutorial. So let's try the single top down arrangement. I have a loop that we can use for this. It's not the best, but it will do for now. Sounds like this. So we have almost all the things that we need to build a full track here. You can definitely argue maybe there should be a bit effects and so on, but remember in the micro arrangement we don't really care about the local changes or local effects, so it doesn't matter. How I would like to start often times that I try to create an idea, okay, how can I proceed with this track? Ableton has its own markers here, but I feel like they are not really visual enough. So I often create the MIDI channel at the beginning in the first and just name it other, like this. So here we can use this like intro, right? And I like the color code exactly the same way all the time so that I understand what's going on. This is our intro. This is a techno track, I think 16 bar enough for techno DJs to blend it in. We have quite a bit nice percussions as well. Good, maybe we can put a build up kind of a verse here. I would say go for another 60 bar and then let's put it into like a little greenish color, meaning that we are developing the energy levels, right? And then here we have a small bridge, maybe a bar or a half bar, I don't know yet. Just to conclude the intro to now or the build up now to our first verse. I like to use the yellow to verses, let's call it the verse, right? You, ha you should be always taking a look at the minutes here because remember the first choruses we would like to hit. The There's no rule but between two and three minutes hitting the first chorus is a good thing uh, so that the our listeners are not really waiting too much to hear the first chorus. So like if you take a look at here, 115, 330, we have one and a half minute here. So we can actually extend maybe the verse around three minutes. So we are able to make it faster than most of the techno tracks, I will say, which is fine. It doesn't need to be a bad thing. And then we can hit a first chorus here right maybe we can go for again 32 bars here for the chorus part and let's put the bridge here and the rest should be the break and it depends on what type of breaks that you are going for i like to, for example time to use the long breaks i quite enjoy them let's do it this way 
break and then you go for the probably second verse here you can even go for a second short build up right here another bridge and a big chorus and i will say build down cool off whatever you call it and then get an outro so what you should do take a look at overall length if you are happy with if you want to make it longer and shorter so if you take a look at we are starting around the minute mark and then we are ending at the eight minutes so it's kind of like a seven minutes track so once you have got this copy this paste here and then you duplicate all the way around here the one thing that i intentionally did is as you can see the first verse is actually longer than this right so if i do this for example you will see that there is an extra what i'm going to do delete this here and do it twice so that i have the same idea twice one more time one more time bam 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 so basically we are just a seven minutes of loop at the moment and we have to somehow back work this out now you have to remember everything that we talked in the structure intro what do we need percussions do we need the kicks and so on i don't know what i'm gonna do is first start with pads i don't think i need i, I want the melodic elements here right take it off play good do we need all these subs and bases i don't know let's try zero that lead sounds we definitely don't need we don't need them probably until the chorus at the first part right easy Hi-hats, do we need these hi-hats at the beginning of the track? We don't need them. So I'm going to pick the probably... I don't want to hear them first. Probably eight bars, so we can take a look. That right sound, we definitely don't need it until the second chorus. So the right is the most energetic, one of the most energetic elements. You delete them up. You don't need them even in the first chorus. It's just overkill, I, in my opinion. So I'm going to just delete until here. So easy, let's play. Now you can definitely argue, okay, you can actually use a filter to make the kick even less bass sound. Doesn't matter. Again, these do all those works are micro micro arrangement. We don't need it. We just need to overlie the air. Good, we start like this, right? And then maybe we introduce the hats. Do we need the driving hats? I don't think so. So let's see which one is driving hat. We don't need this. Let's delete this until here. The second driving hat, this one, let's delete this as well. Let's try if this works. And here we introduce the bass. I don't think we need the pads still. I want to introduce them in the first verse because I think they will be able to carry the track in the verse part. So let's see. Good, time to introduce this. Let's energy build with this short hats. Cool. Right? Remember we have a bridge. What do we in the bridge take off some elements? Take this off. I don't think we need the base elements here. Maybe something like this, right? Delete. Look at this. It just works out. You know, if you know what you're aiming for, like this bridge is perfect. You just need to put some effects, maybe some automation, it's done. Again. Remember we had the claps, so my idea here is like, after first eight bars, let's introduce the claps. And you see that there's a different layer, so let's introduce the first layer of the clap here, after the first bars, like bam, bam. Again, don't overcomplicate it, this is just macro arrangement. Claps. Here, actually, you may consider adding a first kind of a lead sound, just a kind of a hint what's coming out. Again, in micro, micro arrangement, you will definitely put some filters and so on, so don't make it obvious, but we'll keep the idea.
blah 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 the chorus part you know we will probably do micro arrangement here play with the effects and so on so that we have a more linear height and when it comes to when it comes to bridge probably we don't need all the the first thing i'm gonna do take it off we don't need this at the break but on the bridge part we may need the kick right we can filter out and i don't need these guys lead sounds go away probably like this we have this deep sound here of course we will the idea here claps are not hit but maybe we can bring it here to give this driving feel back again Here definitely we will be doing filtering, right? This won't be this dark. And then maybe bring the leads right here. Now we are building up, right? Bring this up. Now, when it comes to the builds up, I definitely don't want the, uh, the leads because we have a chorus, they come back. We don't want to reveal everything. What we can do is take off the driving hats, right? To make it a different vibe here. So I want to create a contrast between here and there. So you see, these are here taken away. These are here taken away. Contrast. I realize we could definitely take even the claps here, right? Again, I'm going from the feeling like we had the claps, maybe we should just avoid it here. I can even consider here actually taking off the pads. Uh, probably in the micro arrangement, I will filter them really deep so that we have the dark. But to remind myself, I'm gonna keep this off and then brings in. Perfect, and then we go here. You see, we go again. Like, it feels that we are going again here. And then remember those right sounds, then we can create this even more highest point in track by introducing rights. Mm -hmm. 
And the rest is super easy. Build down, you start taking off again. Probably you can just make it a bit symmetrical to do intro and then you're done. This is it. This is the macro uh, arrangement. You know, like if you know what you are looking for, it's really straightforward and it's easy to get along, get along with. The only problem with this type of arrangement is it creates kind of more linear development in, in your track. Because you see here, we kind of take the away, take away the things. It's kind of more linear development here. Maybe it's be broken down the linear a little bit. But again, because we are going from the single source, it creates more linear project. And the other thing, of course, it requires kind of an experience of the sound structure in the modern electronic dance music. So you have to have an idea how this, for example, here, this structure look, looks, looks like. But if you don't know that, doesn't matter, because you can also use a reference track as a source for structure of your song. Let me explain a little bit more with the reference track. Now I have a reference track from Joy Houser. It's like a similar vibe, right? So it makes it makes sense to use a Joy Houser track reference track. The only thing that you need to do is actually matching your BPM. So the easiest way to think that I do is just match the first kick here, right? As we can see, it's a bit earlier, but you need to do increase the BPM until it matches like here. It matched. Let's lose them out, zoom more, and see if it is deviating from the source more and more. You see that it's deviating a bit more, so it's probably one under thirty put right there now the kicks are on the bar perfect goes and goes and goes you can always check this is it this is all the thing that you need to do how <laughs> you see how good actually it matched the the joy house track so this is the most of the tracks that it follows like here probably we have the intro and then we have probably a, you see the bridge and then we have a build up getting bring more in more stuff the difference here is they actually pr probably had a kind of a small break this is the reason that the track length is extended a bit. So what you can do here, okay, I want to do it like Joy House, right? They, I like their style. Let's try this style. So break. You can even call it a bit lighter because it's lighter break, right? First verse. Probably first chorus. Yeah, the first chorus here, earlier than what we did actually. Probably this is the second break. I, I would say it's a bridge style break because it's not really really break but we can still use the break we can use a bit darker blue because it's a bit heavier break and we have a small bridge here we have the verse probably until here yeah. and the bridge yeah what is this there's a build down and then we have the big break here we go bam let's make it even darker and then we have this yeah, the chorus, let's move them out. I think we have a couple of bridges here, but I, you know the idea. We don't need to do it again. Probably build down. And this is a bridge. It's good that they have the other bridges so that you can understand a bit more. And then we have this final verse. And we have another bridge. They, they like their bridges, it looks like. And you also, when you do this, you also understand a bit about the art style, right? For example, when you look at the Joy Hustle track, I can see that they like the bridges and the uh, breaks. I would assume that because this really works in the dance floor, because every time you have a bridge and the break, it's the time that you can give a contrasting energy levels and make the people happy in the dance floor. And here we go. Like we already deciphered the arrangement of the Joy Hustle track. And now, the same idea we can do it again. We start, okay, intro, we have a build up to this way, and you can even listen to here, like, okay, they have a kick and bass hat. I can do the same here because I have already made everything here. I can just paste it here. I can continue this way. So if you are a bit less experienced, if you are a bit hard time to understand these different structures, use a reference track. If you do it all yourself, do it like me. Put the things that you think make sense and go from there. And this was just the first one. There is actually two more of this. However, it doesn't need to be always this way. The way I like mostly is actually double or triple top down. Rather than just creating the chorus loop, for example, double top down means that you create one more loop. What I like to do, for example, I create the chorus and then I create the break means that I can fill the rest of the information by using two different loops rather than one, making my break, for example, much more personal and interesting, which gives the opportunity to making the break much more contrasting to the chorus and even increasing that different feelings in different parts. Okay, the double top down arrangement. What we have this time is the same thing, the chorus that we had earlier. Right, the same thing, but rather than having only this one and try to build whole track out of it, this time we also have the second top structure. 
And we have also the break. The additional thing here is that we have new acid lead. And we have a couple of extra elements to make the break different from the really the main course. The good thing about this is now we have more tools to build a full track. And when you're building this type of track, when you go from double top, I would also suggest that in your head try to come up with how the course and the break will look like positionally so i will i'm thinking like okay i will have my break and then i will have some verse in between and i will have a chorus means that now i can fill the previous part of this track here with the, the choruses and so on and then i can develop further here here around i'm not gonna do the same thing because it's exactly the same idea okay what i can do from here i can duplicate this again like we did before and then i start taking off stuff and here i can duplicate take off stuff and here i can do the same thing again and again this is much much easier to work around compared to single top down again because we have the break already and it's slightly different and slightly more personalized and trying to make a break out of the course but there's also even one upgrade version of it let me explain it first and you guessed it triple top down means that you have instead one loop you have three loops meaning that now you can actually have the chorus to drop an alternative chorus. You've tried to create these three different parts in your track before you start arrangement. Once you've done those parts, then you start arrange the rest of the part. I think I have made 80% of my tracks past two years by using triple top-down approach because I feel like it really leads to very interesting organic results and deviates from this linear progression a bit more. Which brings us to the triple top-down arrangement. This is the one that I use all the time. And I think like 80% of the tracks that I made last two years, I use this technique. This is extremely easy. This is almost kind of a cheat uh, if you are really having a hard time with the arrangement. But let me show you how it works. So we start with this, the chorus single top down, double top down, we had the break. We separately built the break somewhere around in the middle. And now the extra is creating also the alternative chorus before we start the arrangement. Again, I try to put alternative alternate course somewhere i think that it makes sense right if i put it here then i have enough time to cool down the track and then the second course i have enough time to cool up or to build up the track right and here what i'm trying to do okay i have this and this let's kind of create something that is good enough to drive a first chorus but it's not more energetic than the second course let me show you We find a use case for this acid sound and bring the pads a bit on the front so that they can carry a bit more but they are not as heavy as this final course. Take a look at the final course now. Here. And you definitely see the resemblance. The pads are the same, maybe pads are a bit low, louder in the first alternative course, but then they cut down. But then have, we have the second more aggressive lead sound coming and the rides are coming in, so we have more energy. Once you understand triple top-down arrangement style, the next is just filling the gaps. You just need to put, find a way to do, cool it down. We just find a way down to carry this track until here. That being said, I won't suggest you to go more than three if you try to come okay i want to build my verse i want to build blah blah it means that you have a lot of different things that you build separately and that may lead to track being almost like three different tracks combined together i really feel like the optimum point is the three top down even in this case if you are not experienced enough you may end up building the alternative course much different from the main course and making still like two different track glued together with the break here so you have to be careful but if you ask me this is your cheat this is the thing that you should be sitting down and trying at home and understanding how easy it makes the whole arrangement. That being said, let's take a look at the other options as well. In the bottom-up arrangement, you don't really start with a full loop. The main idea is you make your track on the go. For example, what you do, you start with the intro, the easiest part of the track, and you build up your drums, and then you start with the verse. You know what the verse is, it, you have to develop an idea, so you start to introduce maybe some melodies, some arpeggios, and you reach the first, first alternative chorus, and then you build your chorus, and then you try to go to a break afterwards, build it on the go, and then the second drop. This is the hardest way to arrange a track. If you are a beginner, and if you are trying to use this arrangement style in your tracks, 
you can have really, really hard time because it is really hard to keep the consistency and it is really hard to not get tired of your track. However, that being said, there is a shortcut to bottom-up approach, which is using a reference track. In this approach, you took the reference track, put it on your arrangement, and then you create the same elements that the reference track has. It doesn't mean that you create the same loop. It means that, for example, at the, at the intro, you hear, okay, I have a hi-hat, I have a kick, I have a bass, and I have a pet sound. Then you create your own pads on your hats, on your kicks. And the second part in the verse, you see that there's a melody introduced. Then you do exactly the same. You introduce your own melody. And the chorus part, you see that, okay, there's another additional aggressive lead. Then you introduce your own aggressive lead. So you keep the structural evolution of the reference track and the structural elements, but you do it your own way. This approach is also one of the easiest way to create the track. So in the bottom approach, you don't have anything. You don't have any loop or anything else. What you do is you start with your intro and come up with a drum loop and then you try to follow some kind of structure and try to go up in the way. Or most of the case, you don't even have this one. So it looks more like this. You just have nothing, a clean sheet, and then you try to build up something on the go. This is especially suitable for live music because then you do a lot of editive stuff. You start your drum sequence and then you try to add something that you come up with at the stage and then you go further from them from there. And it's really cool for building a lap, building up a live track but it's really really hard to build a track this way when you are sitting in the studio that being said like i said earlier there's a cheat version of this makes it extremely easy what you do in this part is actually you put a reference track that you really love and you want to build in style and then you just do one by one you come here and listen what what we have here we have kick rumble synth and a percussion. What you do then is like uh, you build the same kick idea here, right? You, you create something like this. Okay, I have kick, I need rumble, I need a synth, right? And then you go here, then you have this. And then you have a percussion, let's say, then you have your perk. And you follow exactly the same elements, same style elements, all the way up to here. I don't want to do, of course, on the go like this, but you get the idea. And you come to build up here now and you listen here. Okay, we need the hats. You add your hats. You create a similar to one that you have here. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, what is next? Break, take off the... Okay, the kick should be here, but here we take off the kick. And we introduce a probably a lead sound here. We put it here. I think this style like putting a reference track and making your own arrangement is extremely, extremely useful if you are like at the first year of your production game because you don't really know much about the arrangement and you need a source to learn and this provides perfect source to understand how the arrangement are built and how you can actually come up with your own style afterwards because rather than using somebody else's reference track after some point you will actually start using your own track as a reference track i do it all the time like i put my my, my old track as a reference track and then just follow the things that i liked in this track and maybe put some additional stuff and every track is kind of a, a step further from the previous track while keeping my consistency between my tracks it's a very useful way so if you're a beginner, definitely try this out. I'm sure you will learn a lot from this. And this brings us to the micromanagement, but I think I will explain micromanagement in another video because this video otherwise will be hours long. So if you enjoyed the video and if you want to hear more about the micromanagement, it will be a new video probably in upcoming weeks. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button of this video so that I know people want micromanagement video as well. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. And I will catch you next one. Goodbye. Double or triple dubbed. Double or triple dubbed.